Hey guys, how are you? Um, today we are actually going a little down the path of the East Coast Romper, which is my music magazine, if you guys do not know. Um, and tonight we are actually interviewing a band uh, live and in person when they um, come to town. Well, they're coming to town. They are here. They should be here already in New Bedford, Massachusetts. They are playing the vault tonight. Um, the band name is September Morning. They are a transmedia dark culture project. Um, the band's hybrid sound is very, very unique. Um, they do have a comic book series out um, and a little roundabout about the comic book. Um, the story is based on where reapers prey on the souls of the living. And September Morning, who is a character, takes the souls of the wicked so the innocent can live again. <clears throat> the front woman of this band and the creator, um, Emily, has a resume that is like a mile long. This girl is the most hardworking girl, I think, in that I've read about. Like, it's crazy. But she's done theater, art. She's a musician. She's a dancer. She's a model. And the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, during COVID, she started an art project called the Pixie Girls, which is on Instagram. And these these little drawings are so unique, so cute, so artsy, creative. It's so adorable. Um, her music, you know, is dark, heavy, yet... When you listen to the lyrics, if you can get through all the the visuals and the music, her words are like therapy sessions, for real. Um, if you really, really listen to the lyrics, um, they aren't these like dumb lyrics put together to like show off this fantasy world. It's an actual intelligent, lyrical-based song from song to song to song. So... I really am excited to talk to her about that and get her input and insight on how she comes up with lyrics. Um, the band's played numerous sold-out festivals. They've played small clubs, and every single time they bring a show, they bring the illusion of the comic book like coming out in real life to you on stage, um, given their, ch their fans, which they call the Children of Fate always a unique and special show um <clears throat> their live shows they call soul collections so everything wraps into everything that they are perceiving for this project to be and it's really really exciting so tonight will be my first time seeing them um kind of excited to see that um and just talk to them and get to know Emily and the rest of the band a little bit more. So tonight we are heading down to the vault in New Bedford, Massachusetts. They are opening up for OTEP. Um, and the next time you hear my voice, we will be with the members of September Morning. Okay, guys. So we are here with Emily from September Morning. How are you? I am good. Thanks. Welcome to New Bedford. Thank you. Um, so, I'm not really going to ask you basic questions because I feel like you've told the story a million times. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what I did want to ask is, since the inception of this whole project that mm -hmm. you have going on, how much have you evolved it? Like, have you changed anything that in the first like few months of putting it together, you were like this is what I definitely want to do, and now it's gone, like, a different direction? Or? No, I mean, it, it's it's pretty much the same direction. It's just evolved, like, um, the character and, and the storyline and, well, the characters, plural, um, and also, you know, the costuming's evolved mm -hmm. completely. Like, I mean, that's a whole, whole <laughs> thing. But, um, but that took, it took a while because, you know, you have to... I mean, I didn't know how to put together a costume when I started this band. So, like, I was, like, hand-sewing stuff. And now I have somebody that works with me. And, mm -hmm. and you know, we started it with, like, um, muslim and, like, and boning. And then we went to leather. And then and now we're doing, now we're doing um, you know, silicone polymer. 
which okay. is a whole molded process to give me enough room to breathe on stage, but it still looks like body armor, but it, right. I breathe in it really, really well. Um, but yeah, the costume was, and the guys' costumes too. I mean, they started with like leather coats and jackets and painting their arms and stuff. And now it's just, it's very simplified, very streamlined looking, like very linear um, looking costumes that are modern. Um, they have a little bit of a Sith Lord sort of look, mm -hmm. but, but kind of Lord of the Rings-ish, but like, I don't know, they've got their own, but their own sort of flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and they're a lot easier. They don't have to paint their arms and all that sort of stuff. So we kept it like really simple and streamlined so that everything could like, you know, be a lot easier to tour in. Okay. Now, do you just have one outfit you wear each show? Mm-hmm. Ooh. That, yeah, that can get... <laughs> the outfit actually doesn't smell. The wig smells. Okay. But the outfit doesn't it, smell. It, it, the it wig... Feels the wig is a whole nother... Priscilla is a whole thing. <laughs> oh, she, oh, it has a name. It has a name. Okay, great. But, like, she's, like, she gets dirty and she gets stinky and, like, she needs to be washed sometimes. She needs to be washed tomorrow. But, okay. but the costume, because it's a silicone polymer, I just wipe it down after I'm done playing. Oh, right. And it, the sweat just, you know, it's just... It's, it's, it's still nasty. I take her out of the costume in Anchorage and... But you're smelling me. You're not smelling the costume. It's, 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 no, it's, I it's, smell it's, nasty. It, no, no, but it's, it's a full, like I stink. I'm saying it's a full experience though. Like between, because it's like when you eat food, you have to smell it that helps enhance the experience. I'm saying that even if I don't smell the costume, this is so unnecessary. It, feeling it touching it makes it is almost this, traumatic to my my breathing senses. Is this as well. why he doesn't do interviews? <laughs> exactly. Now you understand. No, because I tell the truth. Shush. So I had to take her out. Of, I had to get, put her in her costume, take her out in Anchorage, and imagine like you're at the gym for an hour, hour, two hours, doing everything, and right. you're dripping. So imagine that, except you're in a, a polymer thing that doesn't let you sweat anything out. So as I'm on, no, it's it, sweat. You sweat. Uh, I, well, it's as, all I'm, as I'm on doing it, it's like. <laughs> but it drips. It just, it just drips yeah, yeah, yeah. down. Yeah, like, I'll be signing, I'll be autographing stuff at merch after the show, <laughs> and the droplets will just, like, fall on yeah, the paper. But, and it's a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, but what I had done to do it, it was just like, it was like all those two hours of sweat. It's a bonding just, moment. Oh, I don't need any more bonding moments. Yeah, he's, we've been bonded quite a, quite okay. a while now. Um, so now your old costume. Mm -hmm. It's for sale for $20 million. No, no, no. no would yeah. you sell it? I mean, for the right price, probably, okay. but I mean, I, I have so many of them now. I have like four or five of them because it went through in different increments, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and different because it, the first one that we did that I went on tour with was so, the, the leather was so hard and it wouldn't <laughs> bend. So I got these like sores on my rib cage, oh, like, Jesus. like blisters, like from. It looked good for a photo shoot, but. Yeah, but it was practice. not practical. Like there was no practicality. Yeah. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. And then, but now it's just, yeah, now it's. Live and learn. learn. So well, not, that's the thing. Like, if you were going to sell the yeah. costume, it'd have to go tandem with. Panties? They use panties. Oh, God. That's a whole other site. I'm not yeah. talking about that on this interview. You can check out my Patreon and ask that sort of stuff if you want to. Well, I was going to say she could. There is a lot of money in used panties. Let's That's right. That. That's right. I don't want to believe it, but I just figured like, I might as well just throw it out there and help. Well, they have a whole website just of. I know. Sophia yeah. Gray. Go yeah. on it. Like, okay, not. <laughs> but you can if you want to. My friend makes fifty thousand yeah, dollars every two months insane. on that. It's insane. Yeah. Just panties and feet. That's all you need. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Pandemic um, made us all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now I know you definitely probably have an end game for the story. Mm, not really. I mean, it kind of just kind of evolves. Okay. You know. So. Have you thought about doing something? I mean, you do the comic. You do the music. Have you thought about? a actual book or a movie i mean the comic the comics we have a three four books in one so it's a graphic okay. novel so that's a whole thing like we've thought about all different yeah, types of like, yeah. the same as like like a written a written well like, like a written book like a written novella or something like that yeah. like, like, Lord like of the rings yeah i mean th that that'll probably come out later but like we're we're expanding into different forms of media with it like okay. it just takes a while to do like all of that stuff takes takes a long long time to do. I've been working on something for two years, three years now that for it. So we'll see. 
it's just, you know, it takes a while. So. It's so exciting, but it also must be a lot of pressure having to think about not just music in your visual, but the book and the, you know, everything all together. And the so. NFTs and this and that. Yeah, it's the whole thing. So. All right. Um, so I read this and I want to know if it's true or not. Do you have an obsession with death? Oh, you read that in Kerrang, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, kind of. Like, but I wouldn't say it's an obsession. I mean, it's just kind of like death is part of life. So mm-hmm. it's just like, I mean, you have to accept it. So, and for me, the reason why they said that in that article is because I think that it was like kind of clickbait, if you want to know the truth. Oh, but, it was. We were you know, festival yeah. And they were like, uh, you know, yeah. So it was like a little bit of clickbait. But like, but I mean, I've. I've had a lot of people die on me from a very young age. Like, so in like kind of like weirdly, like strangely, a lot of people around me have just dropped dead, but like not in a mean way, but like, you know, they just died. And it was like, and one of them, especially one of them was very, very traumatic for me. And that's what spawned the story of September Morning. Uh-huh. So like it came from that, from death and mm-hmm. that sort of emotional, you know, capacity of mm-hmm. like, Oh my God, you know, so it's just, it came from that and that's, I guess that's why they say I'm obsessed with death. Because, okay. So know, did you start is. journaling at a young age, like ideas for this? I or? mean, I, like, I mean, not for this particular, this particular one was spawned like when a friend of mine died, like, okay. um, and in September actually, um, of a drug overdose and like, and that friend was, we were like, he was kind of like my I guess he's like my partner. I don't, I don't know how to describe him. He was just like my life partner in a way, mm-hmm. like just somebody that I thought I'd have forever. But now I have him. So like, there you go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's so thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like the Boys and Girls Club, like rec center weekend, like big buddy, big brother thing that I never wanted. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Or, That's or, right. Or, uh, or, uh, anyway, probation. So, no, probation. He's, he's you know, been with said, you the said, longest. Said, right? yeah. Instead of going on the highway and pick up trash, I, I, I'm the trash. You pick I'm up. not yeah. saying trash. <laughs> I don't know said that. I'm just saying that instead of trash. Instead of having to do that community service, okay. I'm doing this community service. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Now, you've been the longest. In the band, yeah. So, yeah, you guys are like family. Oh yeah, Yeah. we're totally family. (laughs) At this point, this point is. Yeah, she told me that she dies. I have to go to California and clean out my place. Yeah, I was like, cool. So a lovely party. He's in my will at this point. It's like all the Yeah, I'm just like, cool. So when she's gone, I still have something else I have to do for her. (laughs) (laughs) It never ends. (laughs) It never. ends. But if you and, knock you know, me off, like you get stuff, so it's okay. <laughs> You'll get paid. Not if you, it's okay. Not if you, it, it's Twenty years from now, you spend all of it. Oh God! Well, you gotta kill me sooner. <laughs> She's obsessed with that. I'm not yeah. saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. This interview is ridiculous. Don't don't, don't believe anything you hear. This is you hear exclusive. What are you talking about? This is exclusive. Ridiculous. You should have heard us in Anchorage. Oh my God! <laughs> Oh my god, that was hilarious. Oh, it was so funny. Roast on her? No, it was roast on him. God, oh. Rainy man. He has this obsession with the song. I don't have an obsession. Because he's, you know. I'll explain it to you, I'll explain it to you, and then you can tell me that she's crazy in the way she's saying this. (laughs) Okay. I'm not. The whole audience agreed with me, so whatever. Of course they're going to side with you. You got the makeup on. (laughs) You got makeup on too. Stop. (laughs) Skyline. This ain't shit. Anyway. This ain't, anyway, uh, so I've been listening to this artist, Death by Romy, a lot lately. Okay. And she did a cover of Raining Men. Yes. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I was like, so it was, it was already on back on the playlist. I was like, oh, I know this song, but I never paid attention. And I started listening to it, and I listened to the lyrics. I was like, you know what? This is actually a very well-written song because, because the lyric, lyrically, lyrically. <laughs> yes. Every every gay pride would totally agree with you. All the weather, terminology, and and the way the barometer's rising. Like all, like I was like, wow, it it actually. Yeah, barometer's rising, honey. Barometer's (laughs) rising. (laughs) I'm just saying that. I'm just being real. From the weather standpoint, all the tongue and cheekness of the weather stuff was well written because it all rhymed (laughs) and made sense. But then all the weird sexual innuendos made sense too, and I was like, wow, that's actually 
someone has to be really smart to put all that together. No, they just have to have a dirty mind. Like, no, what are you to, talking to, smart? Like, I know a lot of to, people to, with dirty minds. Yeah, but to actually smart. have a, a huge over <laughs> four decades worth of a number one type of song where everyone knows it in pop culture. Like, come on. So I was just like, I never paid attention all my life to lyrics until this new artist covered it. And I was like, wow. And instead of her, because she always wants to analyze the lyrics and stuff and like pick it apart. So I was like, hey, you would appreciate this. And she was I've like, been no. to She's enough like, no. white parties in my life to like, appreciate no, that no. song. You, is there something you want to talk about? I'm like, no. And so we were in Anchorage. She just kept telling everybody that like it's random in for me. And I was like, no. That's not what it's about. <laughs> and everybody kept on coming up to the table. Right? <laughs> and I was like, hallelujah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, that's either your. Right. Let's that's, go on with this interview because okay. we're getting sidetracked. Anyway, this, this, this is all deep within the fabric. We're going to uh, talk about your new song. Which? Which one? Well, Wake the Dead. I have a question. Yeah, okay. Did you put that out in 2020 and then revamped it in 2023 or was it the same song? Oh, okay. Uh, so what happened was uh, it came out, like you said, in 2020. Correct. Okay. Correct, Mundo. Uh, then what happened was she was she's in all the NFT stuff and all that. She met a guy named Black Dave, mm-hmm. and he wanted to rap on it. Ah. He's like an anime rapper, so, so it's really cool. So, like he so, raps so, about anime. so we That's gave great. him all the stems, and he kind yeah. of chopped things apart and like added a, a, an addition to the bridge. Okay. And then we had, took his stems, and then the guy that mixed the original song mixed in his parts so it sounded seamless uh-huh. so it's like almost it's like the exact same mix yeah but all of a sudden now there's an extra 45 seconds of that guy's okay first. and he kind of plays with the back end of it a little bit yeah. too it, it's cool yeah. it's actually so, really cool yeah so that's why it was re-released it's now yeah it has his feature on it is this your first like guest appearance on a song for for uh, uh for officially yes officially, yeah. unofficially okay. no oh man okay because like on volume two mm-hmm. Well, Sahaj is all. Well, that's what I'm saying. Sahaj, uh, he's singing for Ra. He co writes a bunch of stuff and produces a bunch of stuff for us. So he's been doing harmonies. So sometimes, so sometimes. On some mm-hmm. of the older songs, like probably 20 Below, mm-hmm. if you listen, oh, yeah, if you you listen, if you listen today and you listen to the backing vocals, yeah. you'll I'm, hear Sahaj. I'm, I'm not singing them. Okay. Yeah, because for us, it's just like, I'm not going to pretend to be him. Mm-hmm. So it, whatever. We just let it be. No one's going to say it's fake because the band's not about, like, we're on the Eagles. Yeah. No one's looking at us going, Hey, I want to see that three part yeah, harmony. They're, they're known for that three part harmony. Where's the third guy? Right. Like, no, gonna, they're, they're just like, oh my god, her wig's staying on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Jumping around, like, off the boxes. And, yeah, we're like, known for jumping. And then flashy lights. And, and, and flashy and cartoons, lights. And, so. okay. and my wig. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Lots of smells. Oh, Jesus. Smell. All right, so for this song, though, I feel like you've guys gotten heavier a little bit. Oh, you haven't even heard the new song. Oh, so yeah. are, is this the direction? Like, are we getting angrier? And, no. And, just, I mean, I, mean, I just uh, think that... I, I, I would say what it is, is we're just doing what we'd rather do than um, go... Does it work for radio? Ah. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. I mean, also there's... We're just writing cool stuff. So like you're writing radio. to be true to yourselves now instead of... Yeah. What I would say is it's 100% ourselves as opposed to, like, 70% ourselves... Filtered through thirty percent of so like you gotta do this or otherwise right. we're not gonna help you and we're so we don't care yeah. if you're gonna help us or not. Okay. Yeah, done, now, yeah. yeah, now I mean especially with NFTs and Web three and, and how we're doing releases now, it's mm-hmm. like it's you know, we write for the fans that love our shit, you know, like we don't write for the radio programmer or like the label or no, that's like, all of our friends in radio that we've known. Yeah, no, years. we love ra- you know, we love those guys. Those guys are great. Well, like, but there's a format and we don't want to write to format anymore because like I don't I don't think there's if format is is to me like radio is like it's really I don't want to say it's dead. It's not dead because it definitely has its place and it definitely fuels a lot of like successful bands. Mm-hmm. Not our place. But for us, it's like we're more like an artsy sort of like transmedia project. Like right. we're not like a formulaic like rock band like swigging beers on stage. Like mm-hmm. we're just not that. Like we we have this whole world we're trying to build out and like and the music has to be a little bit more like you know, 
I don't know, soundtracked and yeah. like, and like, it's interesting. got a not, interesting. Not like, kind of, here comes the chorus and one and right. two and boom, there it is. Yeah, like, it, yeah, it's got a, you know, and like, and so we have a new song coming out on Gala Music on June 15th, and that one's like heavier and it has all these different parts in it, and it's like really interesting and it's, right. it's got teeth, you know, and, and like, we're excited about that. No, I was excited to hear this because I was like, yeah. oh man, that's, that's, we technically wrote that three years ago. No, yeah. four years ago. So yeah. anything that we're doing now is like, I'm not, I on appreciate top, you like that. But if you like, but if you like that, then yeah. anything we do now, like, yeah, that we're that. brewing right now is yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just like you guys because every time I listen to something new, it's so different. Like, it's, I'm like, you know, it's you guys. But it's different too. Right. So yeah. you're yeah. always yeah. like, what's there, there happening are, now? Yeah, there are some bands that like, you know, if they do an album, they write ten versions of the same song. Right. But that's that works for some. I mean, Nickelback has made a whole career off that. But like, and, and we love Nickelback. Trust us, because we we listen we listen to them in the yeah. Sprinter all the time. We, we, but like, this, this, I I admire Chad. Like, I admire, like, I, ad, yeah. I admire his songwriting skills, yeah. and he he writes for his voice, right. and like that's what's really important. Write right. for your voice, and and um so. That's great. Foo Fighters, same thing. Dave writes for his voice. He has great songs. He writes for. He knows. He knows his um, fan base and mm -hmm. what they want, and that's what he does. You know, and and that's that's where they stay. They stay in that lane. For yeah. us, it's a little bit like because the story is so like all over the place. We can be a little bit more all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, we can write for different things because you know the characters are different right. and this and that. The and you thing. need emotion through each. Yeah, and, and you want it, and you want it to evolve. As a listener, I would like assume in a transmedia project, like if you're watching Iron Man, mm -hmm. from Iron Man one to Iron Man, like what are we on six or something? Three That's, plus so, the Avengers. Three plus the Avengers movie. So like Tony's character has evolved. Right. Like he's not playing the same Tony Stark he did in the very his, beginning. His Iron Man suit is totally His different. Iron Man suit has, to, like, mine has evolved. Right. Like, it's like, that the evolution process is just as important as, you know, the song, mm -hmm. like, and the song evolution. Like, you know, everything works into that, so. But, to keep balance on everything, we're going to throw that all out the door and do a porn star dancing cover. No, we're not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> just, well, I have well, to... we were talking about Nickelback, I said they're back in there. Well, I have to say your Stand By Me cover yep. is so fucking good. Thank you. Yeah. And that came out the day Benny King died, too. Yeah, which really? is really very... Ew. We were in Kansas City on our way to go play Rock on the Range. Yeah. And we knew the song was coming out, on Revolver. Yeah. And then the news headlines were that Benny King died. Really that day. So, I'm sitting here. <laughs> right. um, now, with any new song that you guys are doing... Do you have a vision of, because you do have the visuals with the videos and everything, do you write the song first and then have a vision of what the song is going to tell? Or do you already have a vision of what you guys want to, like, showcase visually and then write a song around that? Um, I mean, our songwriting process really stems from, it. you know, I'll come up with a lyric idea that works within the storyline mm -hmm. you know um but see the the way that i wrote the story because september is what she is and she can like absorb people's emotions and when she absorbs it like when she takes a life she absorbs all these emotions in like 15 seconds so like basically i can write about anything because like she's absorbed all these souls so right. she has all these memories and stuff like that so it, it makes i did that on purpose so that i wasn't like pigeonholed into writing for a specific thing. Like, if you listen to Coheed and Cambria, they write very specific. Like, and I didn't want to have to do that for this. So, like, that's why I did that. And I would say, though, for the actual process of us writing a song, the, the formula of how we do it is a lot of times she has a couple themes, mm -hmm. either by song titles or vibes. Um, and she kind of, like... Because a lot of times it's me, her, and somebody else. Okay. Well, the producer, you know, and... Um, and she kind of lays that foundation of what the, the lane she's thinking on a vibe. And she might show some other songs or, or artists that she's been into lately. And then, um, and then I go, okay, now that I've heard all that, here's like the 10 things that I thought were catchy that I've noodled around on lately. And then you start. And then, the she goes, and then she goes, I feel that. And then we just then build a song from there. Okay. 
And then, and then, depending on how that song evolves, she takes one of those themes that she had and then focuses on it. And then once the track's built, she goes and disappears for a night. And the next morning, all of a sudden, she comes back with, with the verses and the choruses and the title. So, it, it, generically, that's 99.9% of the way. Kind of what the process is now. All right. Now, are you guys looking to, because I know you're throwing out sing, signal, signals. Singles. Oh, there you go. Whoo, signals. Um, are you guys looking to do a full length again? or? Are we, we will, but it's always going to be like, I, I, I call it like a, a version of Grace Hits. Where it's like, okay. we write, we, let's say we write 10 songs as a batch. Mm. That, that's our era. That's It's, it's time. So yeah. that's when we're all in this zone. And then if we end up releasing the songs spread out, we'll release most of them as singles, but then at the end, like a Grace Hits yeah. album, you, you, really, you re-release everything as a whole with extra content okay. and a couple extra songs. It's just like the way and that... And that's what's called the volume. So it's, it's in reverse. Okay. You know? The way that people consume music nowadays is so yeah, different. Yeah, it's so different. You know? and, and the way that music is paid out is so different. So you have to kind of like go with how people consume music, how your listeners are really listening. And, and they're I'm, listening to Spotify playlists, and they're listening to singles, then you got to give them singles. And also, people's attention is very, very short nowadays. So if you put out an album, they want another album in, three month, in two months. And you don't have that. So you might as well just, like, throw some with singles over the course of ten months, and then release the album all together while you're writing a new one. Well, um, I would say another trick, too, is that historically, you know, with an album, they had, like, let's say, again, there's ten or twelve songs. You know, normally there's probably... 40% of the album ends up being singles throughout the cycle, and the rest are just like, you know, hopefully good songs, mm -hmm. but they sound like the band, mm -hmm. and it gives, you know, but now it's like the bar's higher, so no, you know, people don't want to have 12 songs in an album and love four or five, right. and then once in a while be okay with the other ones. You know, like, you know, love versus like. Yeah. Now it's like, every, the bar's higher, everyone has to love everything, which... That, but, which makes sense though, because everything's evolved. The, all the tools and all the information right. is there for people that have the talent to write. Well, I to feel like better. too for you guys, a, a, like one track out gives you more time to like embellish it and get it out on all platforms on how you guys yeah. do it. So I feel like that would give you more creative juices to do everything that you yeah. need to do for one song. So. Yeah. Um, Lyrically, I just have a question, a quick question for you, because um, I feel like after listening to lyrics, you're kind of like a therapy <laughs> person. Like, I love, the, I love. The, <laughs> no, 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 like, like mad, like madness. I love yeah. madness. Like, well, I think people can relate to that. You can relate to being in a position like that, you know? Absolutely. I like, I like writing songs. My dad calls me, like, the Taylor Swift of metal. Oh. <laughs> he, he's like, All right. you're like the Taylor Swift of metal, which is hilarious. I find that's really funny. But, like, I mean, you know, her, her lyrics are very relatable. The reason why she's so popular is right. people can relate to, like, all of that heartbreak she's been through. Mm -hmm. Because it's like... Everybody's everybody's lost something. We've all lost. It doesn't even have to be a person. Right. It can be a thing. And like we've all been through things that stress us out. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be, you know, a drug addiction. It can be, you know, whatever. Like so. I mean, things like that are all relatable. So if you if you can figure out how to write lyrics that kind of like, you know, embody that relative, um, relativity then you can, you know, then you've got something. Well, and I feel like, too, because you have that big visual presence that the lyrics kind of stick out, and that's, like, amazing in itself because you guys are, like, bigger than life, but the lyrics, you know, are on their own platform. So kudos to you. Thank you. Um, are, they start five minutes early. So okay. I got I to gotta get dressed. Okay. So... We're gonna have to end this. I'm so it's sorry. Not, no, no, no. Is there one last quick yeah. ultra mega? Yeah. Um, you want to do? I, know, um, I know that we rambled, so sorry. We so yeah. No, 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 no. Anything right. you guys are doing in the next like two Is months like tours that? or anything? Oh, we have uh, we have shows in July. Okay. Like we're doing rock fest and then some headline shows and um. Uh, well, that's in October. 
so 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 yeah, in July, and then we're doing um, this, uh, a big boogie summer fest thing um, in Indiana, Springfield, Indiana. So if you go to our Facebook tour dates slash tour dates. Um, our dates in July are there, and then for October, yeah, we're doing some headlines and uh, tap root shows. So you'll be busy yeah, the I rest mean, of 2023. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not a lot of touring, but stuff's always going on. Stuff. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much.